This is Bazaar Morning Call. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios in Mumbai. Good morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. It's a Thursday morning and uh, what a day we had yesterday and today promises to be another roller coaster of a ride. Uh, we're coming to you from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios. I'm Prashant. With me, my colleague Sonia and Nigel, as always. Guys, hi, good morning. Hi, good morning, Prashant. Good morning, Nigel. Morning. And, uh, you know, we can wear all the green that we try to wear, but it doesn't look like it's going to reflect on the market, right? Uh, a couple of days ago, we were talking about how things are getting a bit cautious and that has played out in its entirety. So, let's see. The day is long. Doesn't look like it's going to be any good. Well, that's right. So, uh, so let's get straight then to the queues that we're tracking. And lots to track, right? Yeah. Uh, so, let's just quickly tell you what you need to know as we begin another session. Uh, and I'll sort of make a quick mention of what we saw yesterday, right? So, there was a big sell-off on the Nifty, the Nifty Bank yesterday. Uh, I mean, you can uh, use all kinds of adjectives, massive, biggest since, etc. But it was pretty large, right? 450 points in the Nifty and 2,000 points in the Nifty. They don't, we don't see that very often. We've not seen that very often at all. Now, FIIs, I'm going to start with flows and I'll tell you why. But it's not just about India. FIIs, we got to know, that sold over 10,000 crores in the cash market yesterday. That's a very large figure. Uh, it's, uh, what, $1.2 billion or so. But this is the uh, fact which I think is not very well known. A exchange data shows that it is not just, and when I say exchange, I mean other markets, Asian markets, etc. Uh, it's not just India, but other emerging markets also saw very large outflows yesterday. So, uh, I'm looking at three markets, right? And all these three markets were down uh, quite a bit. I mean, Taiwan was down sharply. The Kospi, which is Korea, was down sharply. The Hong Kong market was down sharply as well. Almost $5 billion in Asian stocks were sold between these three markets yesterday. $5 billion, one day, right? Uh, and, uh, and this is the reason why I, I wanted to put this up front and center that while yesterday may seem like all thanks to HDFC Bank, and it is HDFC Bank, this also has a tinge of a global emerging market outflow kind of a day. And uh, it, uh, to my mind, it looks like this was largely on account of the very sharp dollar squeeze that we saw. The dollar yesterday, as we were mentioning, same time, went up just to uh, just under the uh, to 200 day moving average. It was about a three quarters of a percent jump that we had. And suddenly, rate, rate for the first rate cut expectation was being pulled uh, back. Uh, the quantum was being pulled back, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this seems more than anything uh, just that. Uh, previous unwinds of this scale, when I say unwinds, uh, outflow uh, from uh, emerging markets have been because of specific events. It could be geopolitical, it could be a market specific, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so I'm just saying that this was a bit of a global thing uh, rather than just a India related thing. Uh, now, uh, overnight, US equities, and I'll come back to India in just a bit. Equities are again weak, but nothing very large. 0.6% of the NASDAQ. The yields jumped. I mean, the 10-year was up four basis points, but the one to focus on is the immediate one, the one which actually moves in close correlation with the, where the Fed fund uh, rate expectations move. That's a two-year. The two-year was up 14 basis points. It ended at 4.36%. Dollar index, well, it was marginally higher, but nothing very large. It's just uh, around uh, the 103.4 kind of levels. Now, HDFC Bank ADR, again from the overnight action, was down another 9% last night. Uh, I, just just uh, 30 seconds on this. Uh, you know, we'll have to check exactly. But remember, historically speaking, all the ADRs which trade in the US trade at a premium as compared to the cash market here. A, a trade uh, absolutely flat as compared to the cash market here. Zero premium. So, for example, if uh, a stock X is trading at, uh, you know, whatever, 100 rupees here, it would trade at exactly 100, almost exactly 100 rupees equivalent in dollar terms in the US. Uh, and that includes all IT names, except HDFC Bank. HDFC Bank, historically, is always traded at a premium of between 8 to 9% uh, in the US as compared to what you can buy it here in India. And with this 9% fall that we've seen last night, that premium, I think, is largely gone. I mean, I think that premium should be between cash and the US ADR would be about 0.5% or so. Uh, you know, ha having said that, right, so you can at one level say that it's just the ADR premium going off but it's still a 9% cut, which means at least to begin the day with, you will have that impact show through. What happens later is another point, but the fact is that this will show through at least right at the word go uh, after what we've seen yesterday in any case. Now, the levels on the index, the Nifty closed below the 20-day 20, 20 moving average uh, yesterday for the first time since October 2023. Uh, October 2023 is when the rally began all the way to the high in December. 
uh, previous conclusive breaks of the 20-day moving average on the Nifty has resulted in between 5 and 10% falls. I looked at August 2023, I looked at two instances in 2022 as well. Whenever the 20-day breaks, it leads to a bit of a pullback and the degree kind of varies. I would watch for, yesterday I said, let's watch, give it 24 hours, right? I mean, uh, as of yesterday's close, the Nifty ended 50 points under the 20-day uh, moving average. Is that conclusive enough on an index of 20, 21,500? Maybe not. So give it maybe at least a day more to see if there is a possibility somehow for the market to defend this level, right? Uh, and then take a call because if it has to go, then the downside is a bit more. I mean, at least 5% uh, to my mind. The immediate support for the Nifty uh, to work day to day comes in at 21,448. That's a recent swing low. After that, the next support comes in at the 40 day exponential moving average, which comes in at uh, 21,167. These are very near term levels. The bank Nifty broke an important support level yesterday with a gap. It closed below the 40 day exponential moving average. The next support comes in at the 50% retracement of the October to December rally. That stands at 45,371. The next support for the Nifty Bank is the 61.8% retracement. That's even lower, which is 44,600. Those are the big golden retracement levels. And on the upside, if all of this has to be negated, which 100% it won't be, I mean, you basically got to take out the lower end of the gap, which is yesterday's high, which is 47,212. The gift Nifty will come up on your screen. Uh, as I said, I mean, you know, uh, it's a big one. I mean, I think uh, an HDFC bank, once again, will play an outsized role, 200 points lower straight off. So this is that pullback that we've been kind of talking about, perhaps will come in January. Uh, there are a lot of factors at play. There was a trigger which perhaps was needed. And I think HDFC bank is the one which is going to do it. Sonia. Absolutely. So, you know, the big question is, has the trend changed, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't have an answer to that just yet. It's been one day of a fall. Agreed. The fall has been pretty drastic, but we we had this a couple of weeks ago as well, where we saw that sort of flash fall, flash sale in the market, and then the market recovered from there. So I think the uh, the jury is still out on whether the trend has turned for the worse or not. We'll only get to know that after a couple of days. But having said all of that, yesterday was the biggest one-day fall that we saw in the market since June of 2022. So it was pretty severe in terms of a fall. The Nifty implied opening is also indicating that the fall will be about 120 points, or maybe even 150 points today. Okay, now almost a 200-point fall, so it's not going to be a good opening at all. So there is definitely caution, and uh, I suggest that the mid-caps, you know, you be a bit cautious there because they could be a bit more vulnerable given the kind of sell-off that we've seen. Yesterday, the biggest number to watch was the FI selling over 10,000 crores of selling in a single trading day. That's not a good sign at all. Of course, DI has bought about 4,000-odd crores. There were fresh shorts in HDFC Bank yesterday. The ADR closed with a 9% cut. There was delivery-based selling of 8,000 crores in HDFC Bank in a single day. I haven't seen that in a very long time. Now, in the U.S. markets as well, um, the Dow was down for the third straight day. And the U.S. bond yield is back above the 4.1% mark. That's on the back of strong retail data, etc. that we got. But uh, And after the recent inflation data as well. Uh, so that has led to a correction in global markets and our market is not too far behind. So that's the number that you need to track the U.S. bond deal, which is now well above the 4.1% mark. Now, all eyes are on a lot of names. There's Reliance, HUL, ICICI Bank. And, you know, some of these numbers like Reliance will could be weak because the entire oil and gas space has been weak this time around. Uh, so keep an eye out on that. The best thing to do perhaps now is to just step aside in this market, be a bit cautious. There could be more shorts in the system today. But uh, the trend has not yet changed because we, it's too soon to say that. We'll have to sort of wait for a couple of days to take that call. But for now, things are definitely looking tough. Well, you know, Sonia, it reminds me of a movie, uh, you know, where you have the hero that's not performing. So movie, how can it be a hit? Yeah. You know, either the hero changes or you have something else that changes yeah. for, or the script line changes. You know, and that's the problem with HDFC because it's such a big weight here on the Nifty. So it's going to, you know, not perform, but... You know, if it just kind, kind of stabilizes, it'll be good enough for the Nifty to at least try to claw its way back. For the time being, it's not performing at all. So that's a bit of an issue. The texture of the Nifty, though, has turned a little bit weakish in the near term till we say get past the 20 DMA decisively and conquer that. So the texture is weak. Though the Nifty and the Nifty, uh, the HDFC bank stock, both of them are approaching very, very crucial levels. And the FNOQs that I was talking about in the last few days, the aggressive long addition, the PCR moving in one direction, well, that's returning back to sanity, which is good news. On the HDFC Bank ADR, I just want to make one point. Yesterday, it ended at around $55.5. You know, you just convert it into Indian rupees. How do you do that? You multiply by the rupee, which is 83. And then, in fact, you divide by 3. If you do that, you will get a rate of 1,540. 
So in the past, we've seen the ADR trades at a premium of around 8 to around 10% premium in comparison to the, to the stock listed in India. But post this particular correction, you know, it's absolutely nullified because the ADR, if you convert it into rupee terms, it's 1,540. So maybe in fact, you know, if we're getting used to life where there's no premium that the ADR uh, trades at in comparison to the stock price. My short point is I don't expect the, uh, the HDFC bank stock to fall as much as what the ADR did online. Because I believe that this premium is going to get, uh, you know, compressed and it's going to get, you know, maybe at some point of time get nullified as well. So that's why I don't believe HDFC Bank will fall that much because it's already aligned. What do the FIs do? Well, yesterday they added massive short positions and they unbound long position. So the swing factor there is 60,000 contracts. And now from being net long of close to around 70%, it's come down to around 54%. And if you pull up a chart at the start of the series, it was 84,000 long contracts. That's come down to around 20,000 contracts. So sanity is returning. Even mm -hmm. on the PCR, two sessions ago, we were talking about it moving to the upper end of the band. Now it's in danger of going to the lower end of the band. And normally when the PCR moves to 0.65, we do see a bounce that comes on the Nifty. So what are the levels you're looking at? HDLC Bank, the 52-week low, 1,460. The bulls will want to defend that mark. And my gut is it will get defended today. The other one that we're looking at on the upside is the 100 EMA on HDFC Bank. And for the Nifty, the recent swing low is 21,450. The bulls will do well to go ahead and in fact defend that mark for an intraday basis. But I don't think anyone is talking about live below the 20,800 mark, which incidentally is the 50 DMA. So it's going to be a little bit of a tricky session. My gut is that HDFC Bank doesn't fall as much as the ADR overnight because it's already aligned. And maybe the bulls will like to defend the 21,450 mark on a closing basis. For starters, Gift 50 is suggesting a big pullback of around 185 points. Okay, well, let's see how it goes for now. It's going to be a very interesting day after that big sell-off yesterday. What happens today? We have a lot of opinion coming through this morning. First up, Surendra Goyal of City upgrades NBFCs to neutral. He believes that the outlook on operating leverage and benign credit costs will support the ROAs. He says City replaces Indicent Bank with Chola in uh, City India picks as they think Chola can surprise positively on growth and credit cost is likely to be contained post the H1 disappointment. They remove Federal Bank from City's mid-cap picks and they already have LNT Finance as one of their top mid-cap picks. He says their December 2024 Nifty target of 22,500 at 19 times forward earnings implies an upside of 2% post a strong rally over the past three months. Okay, well, let's get you some money market views. This is Parul Mittal Sinha of Stancy who says that the USD INR has moved higher in the week in line with US dollar strength and market positioning. She expects the USD INR to head lower once positioning is clear as positive fundamental drivers like first quarter positive seasonality and continued inflow ahead of the index inclusion remains in place. She expects the pair to trade between 82.8 to 83.3 in the dollar in the coming week. All right, and on the bonds, she says that global bond rates moved up this week as Fed speakers pushed back against market expectations of deep rate cuts. However, she says Indian rates moved lower as December CPI and state bond issuances were lower than expected. She says the 10-year benchmark bond yields continue to trade in a tight range of 7.15 to 7.25% and any further downtick in rates would depend on liquidity-enhancing measures from the RBI. She adds the markets will closely watch the budget outcome on the 1st of February, where the government is expected to target the FY25 fiscal deficit at 5.4% of GDP. Well, that's the entire setup. But let's run you through the top 10 stocks that we're tracking for you. We're looking at Oracle Financial, Precall, India Bulls Housing Finance. You have Nazara Tech and Shoba. All of them will be reacting to positive news below. So five apiece. On the negative side, we have ICSA Pro, LTI Mindtree, Happiest Minds, NHPC and Sun Farmer.